The author says, Qala al-ulama. The scholar said, Alham huwa an yamila ila al masiyah They said, the temptation is to be inclined towards the sin. Min ghayri an ya'zim. Without deciding to do it. فَإِنْ عَزَمَ اسْتَحَقَّ الْمُؤَاخَذَةَ الْمُؤَاخَذَةَ وَالْعُقُوبَةَ فِي الْآخِرَةَ Once one decides, then he deserves the punishment in the afterlife. وَقَالَ بَعْضُ And some said, لَا يُؤَاخَذُ بِالْعَزْمِ بِالْعَزْمِ أَيْضًا one is not punished even for deciding to sin. As long as he doesn't act. Or speak. And he decided to do it, but he just doesn't react to this decision. And so if one were to act or speak, then he's punishable. Deserves punishment. وَهَذَا الْقَوْلُ ضَعِيفٌ غَيْرُ مُعْتَمَدٌ And this saying is weak. Unreliable. Why is weak, by the way? For proof that you know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا الْتَقَعَ الْمُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقُتُولُ فِي النَّارِ if two Muslims meet with their weapons, then the killer and the killed are in hell. Abu Bakr said, هذا القاتل فما بال المقتول The case of the killer is clear. Why he would be in hell. But what's the case of the killed one? Why is he in hell? قال إنه كان حريصا على قتل صاحبه he said, because he was determined to kill the other. So this hadith proves that the mere decision to sin is itself sinful. And this hadith proves what? That two Muslims cannot both fight legally. If two Muslims are fighting, then either it's illegal for both of them, or it's illegal for one of them and legal for the other to fight back. إِذَا هَمَّ الْإِنسَانُ بِمَعْصِيَةِ If one were tempted to sin فَلْيُعَالِجْ نَفْسَهِ Then let him treat himself. Let him work on himself. Treat here means like he has to treat a sickness. He has to attend to himself here. So that he doesn't fall into the sin. And if his self, his self that is a frequent commander of his to do bad. If his self does not obey him, if one's self does not obey him, that self which frequently commands him to do wrong, his own self that frequently commands him to do wrong, if this self of his doesn't obey him because he doesn't want to sin, but his self wants to sin, then let one fight himself as much as possible. He has to resist himself. He has to fight it. He's like a drug fiend. He has to fight his temptation. فَإِنَّهَا حِينَ إِذِينْ أَكْبَرُ أَعْدَائِهِ لِقَصْدِهَا بِهِ الْهَلَاكَ الْهَلَاكَ الْأَبَدِي Because now his self is his worst enemy. Because his own self wants to do what leads to his destruction. Now, what the Sheikh says here is the everlasting destruction. It's going to be everlasting destruction if one dies as a blasphemer. If he dies as a believer, it's not going to be everlasting. وَقَدْ وَرَدَ فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِ ثَابِتٍ 
there came in an unconfirmed hadith. Aada aduin leka nafsuk alati baina jambaik. Your worst enemy is yourself between your two sides. Ma'nahu ayyuhal insan. Aduun kabirun leka nafsuk. Its meaning is, O oh human being, a great enemy of yours is yourself. Alati baina jambaik. Yourself that's between your own sides. A in alta'ataha fi hawaha suhlika. Meaning, if you obey yourself in its desire, it will destroy you. Fayambari lil mu'mini an yukhalifa nafsah. And so it is a must that a believer fights himself. And this is very difficult. Yani, when we say it's very difficult, that's general statement and it's relative. Relative, how so? Relative means for each person is his own strengths and his own weaknesses. So while one person might be tempted to do a sin and then easily doesn't do it, another person would be tempted to do the same sin, he can't resist it. And it could be that same one who is easily able to resist the sin that the other one couldn't. He can't resist a sin that the other one can. So it's all going to be easy for you how Allah makes it easy for you or difficult for you. Look how the Sahaba, when it was made forbidden for them to drink wine, they just poured it out. Allah made it easy for them. فَيَنْبَغِي لِلْمُؤْمِنِ أَنْ يُخَالِفَ نَفْسَهِ it is a must that the believer fights himself, opposes himself. Because the self is very inclined to evil. I'll give you another example. A person, as a kafir, he would eat meat. He would eat pork. He would eat any beef, any chicken, any meat. Indiscriminately. Then he embraces Islam. And then he learns, you can only eat the halal meat. So if Allah will, it will be easy for him. He'll say, okay, no problem. If Allah will, it won't be easy for him. So he'll go to McDonald's, he can't resist. So he has to get a burger. كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ الْمَعَاصِي وَالْمَهَالِكِ سَبَبُهَا مُطَاوَعَةُ هَوَى النَّفْسِ Many sins and dooms their reason, their cause, is obeying the self's desire. لَيْسَ كُلُّ شَرِّ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لَيْسَ كُلُّ شَرِّ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ Not all evil is from the devil. بَلْ نَفْسُ الشَّقْسِ إِنِ اتَّبَعَهَا فِي هَوَاهَا تُهْلِكُ الشَّخْصِ Rather, a per person's self if he obeys it in its desire, it will destroy him. Let me give you an example. What if a person, he can't keep his mouth shut, and then he found himself amongst some people who are ready to beat him up. They told him, you turn around and walk away and don't say another word. Uh, now, what's he going to do here? So if he can, let's say, his inclination is to say, what? I'll look anywhere I want to, anywhere I want to look, and I'm going to say whatever I want to say. Now, that's his inclination. If he obeys this inclination, he might catch a serious beatdown. One that he will not win. Maybe he can escape, but he won't win. And if he just fight himself right there, swallow his pride, shut his mouth, turn around and walk away. As they say, he'll live to see another day. Like this one needs to fight himself, I remind myself. In this case, if he don't shut his mouth, then his tongue's going to result in his getting smashed into the sidewalk and his stubbornness. كَمَا يُهْلِكُ الشَّخْصَ تِبَاعُ وَسَاوِسِ الشَّيْطَانِ just like a person also 
is ruined and destroyed by following the whispers of the devil. Much of the evil is due to obeying the self in what it wants. وَمُخَالَفَةُ النَّفْسِ فِيهِ حِفْظُ دِينِ الشَّخْصِ And fighting the self has in it a person's preservation of his own religion and his honor. وَالْعِرْضُ مَعْنَاهُ سُمْعَتُهُ And the meaning of his honor is his reputation. وَهُوَ شَامِلٌ لِشَرَفِهِ this is inclusive of his virtue as well as his good mentioning amongst the people. Two saints once met. One of them found the other one sitting with his legs folded in the air sitting in the air with his legs folded so the other one said how did you reach this level he said by fighting myself i'm going to skip this line of poetry here so that i don't say it wrong but the meaning of this line is that Al-Busiri says what means oppose yourself and the devil and disobey both of them. And if either of them wants to advise you, if either of them gives you advice, then accuse them. Be suspicious of them. Subhanallah. Yani, are you going to Accuse yourself and be suspicious of yourself. Yani, this means don't fool yourself. Some people fool themselves. When you fool yourself, that means you convinced yourself about something. But it's not true, though. That's how you justify something for yourself. To convince yourself about something so to justify for yourself something. He says, oppose yourself and the devil and disobey both of them. And if they if they offer you some advice, that's a rough translation. Then be suspicious. That's how you be honest with yourself. You can't trick yourself or talk yourself into something. This means that had either of them, whether it's yourself or it's the devil, and self here means like your desire though. I'm not talking about here, like let's say you have some sense and you can realize, you can perceive where your danger lies. I'm not talking about that there. You see where your danger or your harm lies, and then you you go by your gut and you avoid that danger. We're not talking about that here. If they, if either of them said to you, "This is the advice," they will not be honest with you. Ma'nahu itahimhuma. Its meaning is be suspicious of them. We must oppose the genie devils and the human devils. And we must oppose the self desires. Some selves are inclined towards evil. This means some people are mischievous. It is their inclination. It's their disposition to be like that. It's not an excuse for them to, to, to carry out their mischief, though. But a person might be like that, so he needs to get a grip on his own self. 
and some selves are inclined towards good. Yeah, and they are helpful and they are nice and maybe even shy, but not necessarily. Just because you like the good doesn't mean you're shy. Could be shy or you could not be shy. Might be outgoing and you like the good too. ثُمَّ يَنْضَافُ إِلَىٰ ذَٰلِكَ وَسْوَسَةُ الشَّيْطَانِ Then you add to that after you consider that a self might be its mischievous or it might be good. Then you add to that the whispers of the devil. Uh, where is that in the Quran? وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Surah Al-Shams Allah swears by every soul and He swears by what created the soul that means He, he swears by Himself too that one who made the soul and He inspired it with its wickedness and with its piety He created the soul and He gave the soul its mischief and he gave the soul its God-fearingness. Yani, one soul like this, one soul like that. One soul more like this, one soul more like that. Could be capable of, capable of both. Some of those people, Allah gave them an advantage because he created them good. They, they don't like sins. They're not inclined to do it. They will not sin. Qala Allah Ta'ala said, God exalted is he. وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ One forbade the self from its desire. That's the 40th ayah of Surah Al-Nazi'at. Uh, he forbade his soul from its desire. SubhanAllah. Where do you find teach like this? Where do you find teaching like this? What religion? It's superior to what any those monks of different religions teach also. وَفِي حَدِيثِ حَدِيثِ خُطْبَةِ النِّكَاحِ And in the hadith that contains the marriage sermon, it is mentioned, وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves. Rawahu Abu Dawood. Abu Dawood related that. Ahyan and nafsu shaksi qad tad'uhu lil kufr. Sometimes a person's self will call him to blasphemy. And some people they get a kick out of blasphemy. The genies, the devils amongst them, that is, they get a kick out of blasphemy. If the human being would do some blasphemy, uh, uh, maybe good word or closest word, yani, or close word is, turns them on. They get a kick out of it. They like when a person commits blasphemy. Some people, they like the blasphemy. Uh, it's a thrill. It's a thrill for them. Oh, bil mal. Or one self might call him to the love of money. This is his motivation for even getting up out of the bed to do anything, is to get money. And if something is not related to making money, he's not interested. Always za'ama, or his self might call him to seek leadership. Uh, very not good. This one you need to be mindful of. Really, you need to be mindful of the one who seeks leadership. And most of the time, when someone seeks leadership, then he'll be disappointed. And even humiliated. Not just disappointed, even humiliated. And some people, their selves call them to the good. Even if they are falling short of the level of sainthood. Even if they are not on the path of sainthood. Still their selves do summon them to the good. That's why things like Jumwa are important. And some other things. Because the believer needs the reminder. We all know the reminder is good. 
النفس الأبية تترفع عن الخبائث والدناءات Interesting النفس الأبية تترفع عن الخبائث والدناءات if this is to be translated the way it appears to me, it means the obstinate self, the obstinate self. Abiyya. The one that has iba. So it's abiyya. More than abin. Al abi is yani. Al iba is refusal. It's like Yani, usually use it in context to mean to be stubborn. Yeah, but or it could just mean refusable. Refusal. Yeah, but aba to refuse. That's what it means. So the refusing self, but abi is emphatic. That's why I said. What did I say? Stubborn, obstinate self. Very refusing. And nafsul abiya. But here he's talking about something good. He says, This type of self uh, is yani, turned off by bad things. This type of self is turned off by the bad things and by the low things, by the vile things. MashaAllah. May Allah grant us that and help us. It's good if you find yourself repelled from some bad things turns you off because yani if you're not like that then you could have low status some people they, they they like low things they like dirty things they like nasty things bad things sometimes even the angels will make good run on a believer's tongue its meaning is that really they would make him speak with goodness and this used to happen a lot to master Omar more than others ففي الحديث إن الحق لا ينطق على لسان عمر in the hadith رواه الترمذي the one narrated by الترمذي indeed the truth utters upon the tongue of عمر interesting the truth utters upon the tongue of عمر ما شاء الله the truth utters Upon his tongue. Very nice. معناه أحيانا الملك يتكلم على لسان عمر. What it means is that sometimes an angel would speak with Umar's tongue. Subhanallah. فائدة benefit. قال أبو الحسن الأشعري. Notice here also. What do you see? This is this is wow. All this talk is called wow. That means preaching. So Shaykh is Yani Kad you call professional professional wa'iv preacher in the real sense of the meaning, real sense of the word. That's something that some of the pious people had. Strength in wa'av. That's talent in itself. There was one, he's called Abdul Wahid. This Abdul Wahid, a lot of things said about him and his preaching and his reminder. Reminders was said about him that he was preaching, and there was someone in his sessions like he can't take it. He says, Abdullah, Yani, stop! I can't take it anymore. And Abdullah doesn't stop, and he's telling them, Stop! I can't take it anymore. And he doesn't stop until this person gargled and he died and also it was mentioned about this one abdul wahid if someone took him to visit someone so this one that they visited what was his case his case was that he dug his grave 
in his own house, in the floor of his house. And he wrote his will on the wall and he prepared his sheets to be shrouded. So he met Abdul Wahid. So the one who brought Abdul Wahid, he introduced them. So he told him, you are Abdul Wahid. I heard about you. He told him, I am so sick. My wounds are festering. Give me some of your medicine cream. Give me some of your medicine cream. He's talking about his wow. Abdul Wahid said to him, if you have prepared your grave in your house and written your will on your wall and prepared your shrouds to be wrapped in, he said, know that Allah has slaves who fear him so much that that fear distracts them from doing even this. So he heard that he fainted and he fell down in his grave. And he like convulsed in there and he urinated on himself. When he saw when they saw the person telling the story, he said, When I saw he urinated on himself, I knew he's his mind was gone. He said they had to get down there and pull him out of his grave. And they had to get somebody from the outside to help them. It was said, What happened? They pulled him out of his grave. And then what could they do? They just left him there in his house. They left him there unconscious, Yanni, and then they left. SubhanAllah. No, he didn't die. I didn't say he died. Oh, the first story. Yanni, why he died? Because, because uh, Abdullah, his words so strong. Did somebody tell you something you ever hear, like something make you cry? So strong. Yeah. So... So then Abdul Wahid visited this man another time. And when he visited him again, he had a bandage on him. Looks like he got hurt somehow. Maybe he fainted and fell and hit his head or something. Allah knows. So when he saw Abdul Wahid, he said to him, do it again. So Abdul Wahid talked to him until he passed away. Told him about paradise and things like this. And this man passed away. You know who else has some strong wow? That you have seen maybe with your own eyes, Sheikh Jamil, Rahimahullah. Uh, this one's from the Salaf, if I'm not mistaken, Abdul Wahid. So, all this talk here, I said all that because I'm saying to you, all this talk here, this is all wa'al that's from the Sheikh here. Depending on how interested you are in the dunya, you can't even talk like this. You have to even have an idea about some things to be able to talk like this. Fa'idah, benefit. Qala Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari Radhi Allahu an Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari May Allah accept him said Inna shaytan lahu hadithun bi kalamin khafiyin ma'a nafsi al-insan fi sadr Indeed, the devil has some let's say nearly undetectable talk with the human's self in his chest in his chest now he's saying he talks to the human through his chest Sheikh saying that's what Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari says لا تسمعه الأذن لا تسمعه he says the, the ear doesn't hear it هو يحدث النفس فتفهم عنه الأشعري says the devil talks to the self it's like the subconscious the devil talks to one subconscious فتفهم عنه and it will understand him but, but the person himself he's not catching it though is what the meaning is here لَكِنَّهُ لَا يَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبِ However, the devil does not know the unseen. Now it says here, the ear doesn't hear it. But that's not absolute that the ear never hears anything from the devil. This statement doesn't mean absolutely the ear never hears from the devil. Rather, this means this is a talk that's not that. This talk of the devil is not that 
الشَّيْطَانُ يَقُولُ لَهُ قُلْ كَذَا The devil says to one, say such and such. قُلْ كَذَا Say such and such. بِحَيْثُ لَا تَسْمَعُ الْأُذُنُ In such a way that the ear... In such a way that the ear does not hear. وَلَكِنَّهُ لَا يَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبِ However, the devil does not know the unseen. لا يعلم بما يحدث به الشخص نفسه Meaning, and what's the point of saying that here? That the devil doesn't know the unseen. He doesn't know what the person's own self says to him though. The devil doesn't know that. Because one self speaks to him, whispers to him. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَثْوِثُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ we swear, we have indeed created the human being, and we know what his self whispers to him. So that's different from the whispers of the devil. The devil does not detect this whispering, the person's self whispering to him. But what the devil can do is just anticipate or assume, maybe because he knows you so well, because this genie who's doing this god knows how old he is and god knows uh, how much experience he has with tricking humans and god knows how long he's been following you or any person that he's following so it could have been following that person since the day he was born never left him or it could be that a person has a genie with him who dies and then when that one dies another one comes and takes his place looks like we should stop here any question should i ask a question yes uh is it said about the gen that accompanies the person and as you mentioned he does not know what the self whispers to the person is it said about that that is good not for a person to show that he's upset by certain things because as if he's giving that gen information about himself i don't remember hearing that or learning that but practically it's a very good idea because one has to be on alert from this devil it could be that the devil wants to know what's on your mind so because because he can't just know only so if he wants to know what's on your mind then if a person is heedless, all he's going to do is just whisper and then the person might talk to himself or make some facial expressions or something like that by which the devil will be able to bother him more. So if a person is aware, self-aware and aware of his accompanying devil, then he can be mindful of his talking to himself he can be mindful of his facial expressions he can be mindful of his body reactions uh, to decrease the devil's harm might not be able to do it 100 percent of the time maybe but even just this knowledge helps him though because otherwise shaitan is going to have a person as they say wrapped around his finger Subhanallah, if a person went to a therapist and told them, I hear voices, he's going to tell them, you need some medicine. Or if he told them, I, I, I see, I see shadows. He's going to say, huh, this is a serious case here. That is a serious case, Yanni, but he's not going to take care of it right, is the point I'm making. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك